In the aftermath of Wolverine having the metal ripped out of his body, literally where we left off last week, we come to the final episode of season one of X-Men 97, and it doesn't disappoint. To me, my know-it-alls, it's time to break down the entire episode. There were cameos galore, events are happening, and things are unfolding. And we're gonna talk about each and every one of those things right now. What's up, my noddles? It is the final episode, episode 10, also titled Extinction is Tolerance, part three. So, Extinction is Tolerance, part three, is the third part of the of the finale, the three-part finale that, that has been broken up, and each, each one has built up further and further and further until this moment. At the end of last episode, literally, we were at the uh, Fatal Attractions moment, Wolverine attacks Magneto and uh, in self-defense, but at the same time, a little bit maliciously, Magneto takes the opportunity and rips the metal out of Wolverine's body. Wolverine's out of commission. So I'm going to say right now, up front, Wolverine's out in this episode. So if you were looking for, wait, Wolverine, this and that, blah, 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 he's out in this episode. Next, uh, again, spoilers, if you haven't seen the episode, go watch it. It dropped this morning or last night or whatever, wherever time frame you're on. Uh, and I'm telling you, it's worth checking out. So... Do we see Gambit this episode? No, we do not. We do. The, he is his presence is felt in that uh, rogue hold it down for uh, for the Cajun in such a wonderful way. But ultimately, what we what we're faced with is is the exact we go into Magneto's head. Xavier takes an opportunity, and he's in he's he's in, he's in Magneto's head, and he is forced forced to force Magneto. To undo what he did to the planet, thus releasing the Sue, the uh, the Prime Sentinels, and Bastion, and everyone again. So literally, it's this. Uh, uh, things have gotten worse yet again. The X Men are doing their best to fight and defend, um, and that's when, out of anger and frustration, Bastion rips the arm off of Nathan Cable, and he takes the metal and assimilates it into himself whatever the techno stuff is and whatnot, and ultimately becomes this avenging angel-like creature version of Bastion. It's actually very much from the comic books in terms of how you, his look, um, because through the entire Fatal Attraction story, as that story progressed, you got this, uh, 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 not Fatal Attraction, forgive me, but through the, the Prime Sentinel storylines and all those other things in the comics, you actually do get to see this crazed version of Bastion and that he's becoming more and more technological and whatnot. You also get the clarification of the fact that the professor didn't turn Bastion away. Bastion's mother turned Xavier away. At least that's the that's what comes out. And it does not that it really helps anything in the grand scheme of things. Overall, the story is is very it's very poignant in that at, this entire story is about how much is hate going to destroy you. It's a very poignant and very relevant story, in my opinion. Uh, I, I know that I, for one, as I'm watching this thing, I'm saying to myself, where do they go from here? Like, genuinely. I know in the storylines where they go from here, and by the way, my predictions haven't been that, that I haven't hidden my predictions away. And and in truth, when you get to the very end of this thing, it does. I do feel like it meets out a little bit. So what ends up happening is the professor has to end up, uh, uh, the experience of forcing himself into Magneto's head to force Magneto to do something breaks Magneto's mind or begins to break it. And for a brief period, Magneto can't remember who he is. So Xavier has to sit here and walk him through some sort of memory lane the entire time trying to help him through all of this, especially because Bastion's ultimate end game is to drop Asteroid M onto Earth. I will tear that rock from the heavens and hurl it to Earth, granting humans the same mercy I granted your clone mother, a quick extinction. Oh yeah. He means to hot drop it onto Earth, uh, very similar to what they did in uh, in Avengers, the second Avengers movie, Age of Ultron. This is when you start getting all the cameos. All the cameos. We see, count them off for me. We see Silver Samurai, Iron Man and Captain America, uh, D uh, Daredevil, Doctor Strange doing surgery. What looks like T'Challa later, you find that it's T'Chaka, but you also get to see the Dora Milaje. Uh, Cloak and Dagger. 
what looks like a Russian version of the Avengers with Omega Red and a couple other characters I'm not super familiar with. If you know, comment below, please. Uh, the survivors in Genosha, you get to see North Star and his sister, Puck. You also see Psylocke. And at one point, of course, you get Morph. You also get to see Mary Jane and Peter Parker from X from Spider-Man 98. Uh, I, I'm calling it Spider-Man 98. You know what I'm saying. Spider-Man, the old animated TV show. Uh, as they stand watching everything happening on a TV screen, it's a lot of fun seeing all the various characters that people can be uh, that throughout this thing. It's it's definitely laying the groundwork or the foundation for a a, a Marvel uh, animated universe. So I guess that would be the MAU. I would love to be the first person to coined MAU. I doubt it, by the way. Anyways, uh, I was excited and I thought it was so cool. I was like, all right, right on. It's written well. The story is really good. You get to see a really great moment with Nathan uh, and and Gene and them because they're gonna fight very hard to save Astrodem, and uh, because before it gets down, and the X Men are literally trying everything. At one point, there's this amazing fight between uh, Rogue and Bastion. Rogue, using all of her Captain Marvel-esque powers, just slams in, and she is. I don't know that she has ever made this epic or this amazing in the original series. I don't remember it if she was. And she's just pummeling him. She, and they literally get to the ruins on the moon and they're fighting and he tries to choke her out the whole bit. Uh, Nightcrawler shows up and he te teleports her away and he's doing his best because Nightcrawler apparently can just teleport all over the place now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an epic battle. And so as it's about to go down and the, uh, the UN, we get to see the decision is made by uh, President Kelly now to initiate the Magneto protocols. So you get to see, so they're literally both the males thrown everything plus the kitchen sink into this entire scenario. And it's pretty incredible to watch. They launch missiles at Asteroid M, the missile launch doesn't work. And so the whole world is basically just like, oh my God, pray and wait. And that's what they're doing. And so the X-Men are going to commit to uh, trying to stop it. Rogue is doing her best Superman impression, trying to push the, the thing. Storm's trying to help cushion it as best she can. Gene's using telekinesis. Scott's trying to break the thing up into pieces. He just unleashes his optic blast in a massive big bad way. And, uh, and it look, all things look bleak. And that's when the professor helps Magneto come back to his senses. Magneto lives. And... Magneto shows up and basically carries the entire thing up into the sky and everyone celebrates it. So once more, mutants have saved humanity. Are we ever going to learn? Anyway, um, the whole thing culminates in something happening where the entire asteroid disappears. There's this massive flash of light and that it looks it looks like the asteroid and everybody aboard either teleports away or fades away or something, but it's this colored, like, like glittery effect that just kind of makes the whole thing. And we don't know where anybody is. We jumped to six months later, and there's apparently, like, people are believing monuments at the X-Men's mansion, which is still there, laid waste. Uh, there's news reports that says we haven't heard anything about the about the mutants since then. Um, and, and we're wondering, where is everybody? They've been, where they've been thrown in time. Half the team, or majority of the team, rather, is... It, and th a lot of this, by the way, this is from the, the stream from the comics. I cannot remember, because this is probably that era when I wasn't reading, when I wasn't staying up on comics, when I had gotten out of them. So I need to do my homework and read up a little bit more on some of these, just to better... But I do know the events, roughly. Uh, a big group of them have gone to the past. They've gone to 3000 AD. I'm sorry, 3000 BC. And... They encounter Egyptian soldiers. They rescue someone. And they're like, who are you? Because it's Beast is carrying the professor. He pulls his mask down. And he goes, En-Sabanur. For those of you playing at home, En-Sabanur is the, is the original name of Apocalypse. And of course, if you couldn't tell from the blue lines on his face. Uh, so they're in the past. And, and literally, Beast is like, oh man. Because they're old oh boy and they're in the past. They've time traveled. Gene and Scott have gone to the future, to the year 3946. 
And in the future, they're introduced to a young boy, Nathan. So they're going to get the opportunity to raise their son. And it's, I'm, it's interesting. And, I, and he's basically, I, they're gonna, it's the classic storyline where he goes by Slim, uh, uh, which is uh, Scott goes by Slim and that he's, he raises it. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. I see, I kind of more or less can see where they're going. And, the, and we're going to get, a, clearly we're going to get Apocalypse way sooner than we thought. Because I, I was like a lot of other people, I thought we were going to get Onslaught first and then eventually get Apocalypse. No, no, no. Au contraire. We're going straight to Apocalypse. I'm hoping a lot of this lays the groundwork because in the original comic books, you got the Onslaught series. The Onslaught saga was exactly what it sounded like. And in it, someone murders during during that whole setup or whatever. Uh, uh, Onslaught leads to Heroes Reborn. Heroes Reborn leads back to some other things. Eventually, when you... Uh, eventually, you get to this place where the professor gets murdered. And that is that throws everything off. Magneto has to assume his position, whatever else. Apocalypse takes over this event. And it meets out, I think, by the end credit scene. Precipitates what happens and why Apocalypse takes such a huge role. They might be doing a variation on the Age of Apocalypse in that without the X-Men there, the Age of Apocalypse comes to fruition. So when they all return to their own time... There's every possibility that they're going to return to the Age of Apocalypse and have to deal with a lot of that, a lot of those things. Now, it's not exactly Age of Apocalypse, those of you who read the comics, but it's close enough, in my opinion, that I think you can. And, and a lot of a lot of the storyline has been close enough, and it's super like you see the events being woven together. So anyway, there you go. Now you know. And if no one's half the battle, you have to be an owner yourself. What's the all index for this episode? I'm going to give you two: first for the episode, then for the season. I think you kind of know what these are. Trust me. I'm going to surprise you, though. This episode was excellent. It was wonderful. I could think of about three episodes throughout the season that were better. There's, there was nothing wrong, inherently wrong with this episode. But when you, have, when you come on the heels of so many bigger things and events, remember it. We get a wonderful callback to remember his name. Uh, Rogue hits Bastion, and when she hits him, she's like, his name was Remy. Remember it. And uh, uh, so I do feel like there was uh, a measure of callback there. But at the end of the day, uh, I feel like this is an excellent, it was an excellent finale. It was wonderful. I'm going to give this episode a solid 9 out of 10. Okay, comment below. What do you think about my room? What do you think about my score for this episode? Did you want to give us something else? We lower, higher, whatever. I would love to hear that. Now, for the season, what is the No All Index rating for the entire first season? This, I would hope, there's no doubt. There's no doubt of. Uh, this is arguably the most satisfying season of television I have ever seen in my life. And Nick, the only other, the only other season that comes close for me was Star Trek Picard season three. I'm a Star Trek fan. That season did wonderful things for me and really, really g it, it gave me all the things. This not only this didn't do not only did that, but it's doing one better. It's continuing. To me, that makes this a solid nine and a half out of 10. All right, guys, I cannot wait to jump into the comment section below and hear everything you have to say about this episode. Let's talk about it. I wanna know, what did I get wrong? What did you love? Tell me, were there more cameos that I missed? What are some other Easter eggs? Beyond obviously the big story plot points, because that obviously we know. But all right, guys, do we here? follow me on all the social medias. I cannot wait to talk more about all this stuff. Uh, if you missed out on this season, hey, don't worry about it. You can always catch up. Go back, watch the show, and this here is the playlist for the entire season. That's the playlist, or that, uh, no, the playlist, sorry. That's the video for last episode. All right, guys, till next time, never forget, everyone loves a know-it-all.